I don't need a lot of time with each one of them uh, because uh, they're straight, straightforward messages, but uh, very crucial and very important messages. So the first message that um, the name of today's uh, sermon is called The Curse of the Praying Mantis. The Curse of the Praying Mantis. You can write that down. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we got a, quite a few scriptures to get into. Praise God. We're going to start in Revelation, the book of Revelation. We're going to go to chapter 2, book of Revelation, chapter 2. Everybody there? Okay, we ready? Brother opening Christmas gifts in the back or something, man. Tear it out. Let's go. Get that, get that brand new sword open. Amen. Revelation chapter 2. Verse 20. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before we read verse 20, verse 13. I know your works and where you dwell, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holds fast my name and has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receive it. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto fine, uh, excuse me, like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and patience, and works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou suffer that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her sp space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give every one of you according to your works. You see that? So there's a serious situation here in the last days when it comes to Jezebel, right? And if you know anything about the character of Jezebel, Men could not dwell around her without being castrated. By the way, brother, I love your hat. Wow, just random, just seen it. That's a beautiful hat. 
Um, I'm about to call tithes and offerings. You're going to drop that in the box. Can I get an amen? Just keep your 20, brother. Drop that. Next Sunday, just, yeah, just praise the Lord. Um, I did forget to do tithes and offerings. I apologize, you guys. Let's do it at some point. One intermission during the second sermon. Amen. That's a good sign when the preacher forget times. That's the first thing. You walk in there like, hey, like a like the dude, like the guy that walk your luggage to your hotel room. They stand there like, is there anything else? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm I'm good, brother. Just you sure? There's nothing else. But um, so men were not allowed to be around her unless they were castrated. Um, do you guys? All, everyone knows what castration is, right? It's when a man's balls are literally removed. Okay? So eunuchs, you want to write that word down, that's what a eunuch is, right? A eunuch is somebody who is castrated to serve a queen or to live in the palace. And Jezebel was killing and destroying the prophets of the Lord, right? You know, I mean, the whole story of Elijah the prophet, and you really need to read that book, man, I'm telling you. You got to dive into the scriptures, and you'll be amazed the revelation that God will show you. <clears throat> There's a couple key words and phrases in the book of Revelation that a lot of people overlook. <clears throat> One of them is that he says you tolerate Jezebel. That word sufferous means you tolerate her. That means that you put up with her. <laughs> now, fellas, for y'all brothers online, I am in no way sowing discord in your marriage. I'm not telling you to look at your wife like she the queen of hell. Because, no, a lot of people are like that. It's not fair. There's a lot of husbands and wives that will immediately think of their spouse but not look in the mirror. Before you even try to judge your husband or your wife, make sure you don't have a, a forest in your eye. You got a tree sticking out, a stump out this eye. You know what I'm saying? All these branches all over the place. And you're like, you know what I'm saying? I, I have to say that because <clears throat> there's a lot of slick pastors. They're really slick how they preach. They know what they're doing. They'll stir up marriages like crazy. Women online will be listening to a message. You'll be like, these good for nothing men. I'll tell you, they don't do nothing. And you're like, you got to be careful how you talk because you could stir a, a man's wife against him. Now, if you're preaching an authentic word and you're speaking about a particular uh, certain man, he happens to be that type of man, well, he needs to repent. But the truth is a lot of marriages do get attacked by, by this curse. When I tell you the name of today's sermon, it's called the, the Curse of the Praying Mantis. Right? A lot of ministries get attacked by this curse. So, Jesus is saying, you're not even supposed to tolerate Jezebel. Now, mainly Jezebel operates through female. That she is female in, na in nature, the real Jezebel, right? But there's also a male version. So this message is not just the women only. Although, I'm going to have messages where I'm pointing out the men. If I'm talking about messages about men who don't provide for their homes, men that want to sit around playing Call of Duty all day smoking weed, yeah, I'm going to preach a message about you. My Bible says you ain't even supposed to eat. I pray your food stamps get cut off. Brother just trying to click out the YouTube. <laughs> Brother stumbling with the mouse. Just who did, who did I click on? Just I rebuke that curse. He's a witch. No, may your food stamps get cut off, you bum. Leeching off everyone. Playing Call of Duty all day. Smoking weed. Doing nothing. My Bible says you ain't supposed to eat. What you want me to do? Get a job, brother. Don't tell me you can't get a job. You can get a job if you try hard enough. I, I remember now this brother, he defaulted and went to the black Hebrew Israelite movement. But man, I wake up early in the morning. I'd pick him up. We would pray together. 
Lord Jesus, help him get a job. He had felonies, all of that. Within about, right, hon? About, I'd say three to four weeks, um, old boy from Walmart. Uh, I had a dream about him. Yeah. So, man, you know, I was just, my wife and I called to serve. I told you guys that. You, you think, okay, God made, made me an apostle. That's a mighty thing, right? Apostles are meant to serve. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, it's, it's actually one of the, it's, it's one of the most sought after titles is prophet and apostle. But when people get it, they kind of regret it. It's sort of like when you, your children talk you into getting a pet dog. Oh, boy. It's a joyful ride. On the way home with the pet. Just, oh, you're so cute. What are we going to name you? We're going to name you Daniel. Because you was in the lines then and God delivered you out. And now you're coming home with us. Two weeks later, he's just like, Lord, I'm done. I'm done. He's pissing all over the place. He barks all the time. I take him outside. He wants to play. Like, Lord, see, you regret it. Don't front. A lot of your parents did that route before. Some of us are just not meant for dogs, okay? I don't like how they smell up the house. They're too needy. You know what I mean? I, I got to, they bark. You leave the house, they're crying. Neighbors think you're abusing your dog. You know what I'm saying? They kind of make you like, they're too distractive for me. I love dogs. Listen, I love animals. Just don't want one in my house. My mama thought she was no wet. No other female version. Two of everything. Two birds, two lizards, two guinea pigs, two dogs, two cats. I'm like, Mom, we ain't even got money for food. It'll work out, son. So, so what, what I'm saying to y'all is this, this spirit, though, for real, is, is destroying many houses. It's destroying many churches, many ministries, I should say, right? <clears throat> so when you look at the life of Jezebel, God is saying we're not to even tolerate her, okay? Now, I expect women of God to not run from this message. Matter of fact, I expect women of God to support this message. Because a lot of the men that are supposed to be fighting for you have been castrated by this spirit. A lot of men that are supposed to be in the front lines going to war have been destroyed by this spirit. So, if you're a real woman of God, you should not be offended by this message. Matter of fact, you should, you should actually thank God for a message like this because most of the women in this in this last days, have this spirit on them in the churches. I really don't have to talk about the world. It's the world. You know what I mean? Like, I got to tell you this evil. Bless. I got to tell you this evil in the world. You feel me? I got to be like, yes, I got to warn you. The world has evil people. Brother, I think I know that. But it's when that spirit comes into the church and it's when that spirit comes into houses. Remember what I said, fellas. I got plenty of messages for y'all. And, and this message is mainly for our sisters, but there's also a message for the men involved. Y'all see the lion on my shirt? Chilling, right? Yo, I got to like, I was, listen, when people give me comments on YouTube, I give it as I get it. It's like, um... Like the, the force of gravity or whatever, however hard you push on the wall, it pushes back. Wow, it almost, I was like, man, it's, <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> right? I'm like shocked. I get a message. This guy was like, nobody wants to stare at your automobile logos on your shirt. Enter. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, so let, let, me, let me get this straight. Two and a half hour message about <laughs> repenting and holiness and watching out for witches and warlocks. And the only thing you got to talk about is a shirt. Brother, I got it on sale at Evelyn's. What do you want? 
You know what I'm saying? I don't got a Mercedes. I don't got an Audi. But I like the style. Now, it'd be different if it's like Illuminati stuff. Like if I got a, you know, a Freemason symbol on my shirt. But my point is, is pe people that become so, they watch so many Illuminati videos and they watch so many videos like that. That's all they do all day long now is pick apart people like, yeah, like you, you missed the message and the whole time you were just like, Lord, I pray for works that he leaves the Illuminati. Like, brother, are you crazy? That's all you got to talk about after a message like that? So I, I, I came at him like, yo, you need to repent. You know what I mean? We're in the last days. Soon the Illuminati is going to put martial law and the last thing you're going to be worrying about is a shirt someone's got on. I said, we're in the last days. He was like, you're prideful. I said, yo, how am I? I'm prideful? No, no, I'm going to give it to you how you give it to me. That's how Jesus was with the Pharisees. He was soft-spoken with certain people than with other people. He was like, you, I'm talking to you. You're blind. You're leading the people into a ditch. You got to give it to people like that. Huh? That's right. I was like, this brother's bananas. But anyways, my point is, the spirit praying mantis, right? If you go throughout the Bible and you look in the scriptures, you can see men that had a, a calling with God get destroyed. You know what I mean? Starting with Adam. What does it say in Timothy? Let's, let's go there. First Timothy, chapter two. My wife was so excited. There was two new Bible man series at the Christian store. She was like, "Yes, <laughs> Bible man's on point." I like Bible man, cartoon. Yeah, you gotta look it up on YouTube. <clears throat> got a catchy little song too, right? I might be blasting that downtown to Bible man. On a Friday night, cruising. You feel me? It's catchy. They did their thing. Y'all there? First Timothy chapter 2. In Jesus' name. Eight going down. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. You see that? We're at 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 2, verse um, 9. No, 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 where am I at? 8, verse 8. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Now, is he saying you can't make yourself look nice? No, he's not saying that. Is he saying you can't have style? He's not saying that. Think about it this way. When Jesus Christ told that rich man to sell everything he had and give it to the poor, right? He didn't tell that to everybody. He told it to the man that was bound to the riches. Does that make sense? Because the, the, the other brother... He boasted to the Lord. He said, uh, is that door locked? No, it isn't. Okay. He boasted to the Lord. He said, uh, Lord, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Right? I've, he said, I, I've given half my money to the poor. And he said, if I, if I owe any man money, I'll give him double. Jesus didn't go, wait a minute. I told the other man to give all his money to the poor. Why? I mean, this is a great analogy. I've used it plenty of times. It's because... God will deal with you according to what strongholds are in your life and what weaknesses you have. See, he's not saying all women, you know what I mean, you know, come out the house with busted looking hair and, you know, can't wear a necklace or jewelry or he because because back back then there were certain people that had certain certain mind state where they would dress all fancy and think it's all about them. You, you can't see it in churches now. It's coming. It's already back. Yo, it, it is crazy. My wife and I came. We was un unlocking the door to come in here. 
<clears throat> and there was a girl standing there waiting for her grandmother. She must have been about 20 years old. Her, her skirt literally was like right here. Right here. I'm like, sis, just, it was high. It looked like, a, like this, this, this thick was the skirt. I mean, and my wife and I, she spoke English, but she pretended with my wife. My wife was like, excuse me. Do you, are you going to church? As soon as she felt my wife's energy, she was like, and she kind of ignored my wife and stood on her phone. But this is what I'm saying. This is the wickedness going on in the house of God. And when the Bible says judge not by appearance, that's not what you think it is. Yeah, you ain't supposed to judge by appearance because someone, a woman might, it might be her first time coming to church. She ain't got no god godly clothes yet. Right? But if someone been coming to church for a year, and they've been a Christian for a year, and they still dressing like a harlot coming to the house of God, you have a Jezebel spirit. You are trying to cut someone's head off. Because men come. Now, now, fellas, it shouldn't be in you to lust over her in the first place. A real man of God should be able to see a woman come into the house of God dressed up like Rihanna, right? And it don't affect them. But when women got to come over and embarrass that girl who's brand new in the Lord, she has no, and you ever see him put the white sheet on him? You're embarrassing that girl. Why are you putting the white sheet so your man don't look at her? What's wrong with your man then? He should have that out of his soul. Lust should be out of him because they're going to connect. Lust in her will connect with the lust in him. But if he's a man of God, he, he going to look at her like a lost soul and pray for her and be like, Lord, have mercy on her soul. You see the difference? But you clearly see that he's talking about these women in these times that were wilding out. They were putting on, you know, pearls and all of this stuff and, you know what I mean, it became what? Fleshy. But ain't nothing wrong with looking good for your husband, looking stylish, you know what I mean? Because, let me tell you something, my wife and I have seen churches where the women wear the, the big, thick jean dress, right? right? The triple extra large Hazel Crystal shirt. But they be devils and a half underneath all that nice, thick, godly clothing, though. You see how you got to balance it out? They be trifling. <laughs> it's true. Look what it says, though. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Now, why would he say that? Is he trying to be, like, uh, sexist? Is he trying to be like dominant over the women? No, 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 no. He had to come stern like that because of some women. Because of some women who try to overstep their boundaries. He wasn't talking to the women that were godly. You know what I mean? Who had a prophecy to give. And they prophesied. A woman can prophesy. A woman can teach other women. And guess what? If, if my wife and I are on the road, if we're out ministering or doing evangel evangelist work, and we're, we're talking to a guy, my wife have, has every right to tell him something about Jesus. This ain't Islam. But this is talking about order. That's all he's saying. He's saying, look, but I suffer not a woman to what? Or to what? Or usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. You know, Peter says in his letter that the woman is considered the weaker vessel. But it's not weaker like a woman is weak. Yeah, women are, women are moved more by their emotions. Nowadays, I don't know, you know, guys have become real effeminized. Huh? Yeah, yep. 
I'll never forget. I'm waiting for my sweetheart to come back out because I got something to say. I got a testimony. Honey! I'm about to, I was about to tell him about one, a story about you. Many, many years ago, before the boys were born onto this earth, I remember we, you know, we used to go, we used to, you know, we was bearing witness to what was going on in churches. And we seen this at a hotel. They had a prophet from Ghana meeting. And um, man, my wife was hungry at that time. Let me tell you something. She was on fire. And it's one thing when you get a Christian that's on fire, they will go anywhere and everywhere just to see if God is there. Can I get an amen? amen. You got to give women props, man. They are more faithful with that than men for now. Fellas, we can step it up. Can I get an amen? amen. But women are supporters. Women are no joke. They're the ones that hit like on the YouTube videos. Fellas are too prideful. It was all right. It was all right. He's, he's blessed. He's blessed. But he, when he's alone, I'll be like, hallelujah. He'd be on the highway just preach it, brother. Get home like, he's blessed. Right? Women are the ones that are like it. Women are the ones that are put it on their Facebook. Women are the ones that will support financially. Because men, we are thinkers. We're like, wait, wait, honey, wait, wait, wait. Okay? I know you want to give $100 to this ministry, but we got rent's coming in about two weeks. Trust the Lord. Trust God. I've been there. My wife just trigger happy sometimes, just right into the bucket, just... I'm like, honey, wait. I'm grabbing dollar bills. Like, hold on, wait, baby, wait. There's no law about giving in the New Testament, honey. We got to be wise with giving, Jesus said. You know what I mean? But it's true. Like, what, women are like that. You know what I'm saying? They're very blessed to have in your corner. If you have a wife, you have a good thing. If she's in the Lord. Amen. And she brings favor. But anyways, getting back to the, to the story. So this man, this false prophet was like, I need you, 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 all of you to come. Hundred dollar, was it a thousand? No, it was a thousand. I think it was a thousand dollar check. He was like, cut a thousand dollar check. All of you, I will prophesy now. My wife, we didn't have a dollar to our name. I know, literally. Like at the time, I, had, I didn't have a, um, an ID. We're talking, how many, like a... a, a 10 years ago. Yeah, I didn't have an ID. I was going to work a day. You know what I mean? You know what it's like to do work a day? Good night, brother. You wait like four hours to get told to go home. You're just like, oh, man. Stop at the food pantry on the way home. Just, yeah, let me get that meat in the back. Let me get that powdered milk, right? My wife just gets up. I'm like, babe, babe, where you go, babe? Hunt, hunt. She just. And she just stood there. But I respect it, though, because she was hungry. But that's what I mean. When the Bible says women are weak in vessels, it's not putting women down. They're at, they, they move, they, they're like, let's go, let's do it, come on! You know what I mean? The emotions, that's why the first thing I taught her, one of the first things I taught her, and the Lord has used her to teach me many things. One of the things I taught her was, don't be led by your emotions. Don't get emotional. Don't let your, the devil comes in through the emotions with women. You know what I mean? He knows what he's doing. Trust me. That's right. So it's saying that a woman, though, is not supposed to teach nor earth up authority over the man. Okay? And what happens is in these last days, let's go back. Let, let's take it far back to see what happened. During the time of World War I and World War II and even the Vietnam War, what the enemy would do, he would send all the men off to war, right? And while the men went to war, the government would, would, grant, uh, grant, um, would give out grants and things where the women were able to go and get a proper education, go to college, you know what I'm saying, and, and get good paying jobs. So what happened was all of these men came back from the war, messed up, couldn't get a job really, or the job they got was a laboring job, 
And the women were making twice as much as the men in the house. Now, I don't care what you say. If it's not a God-fearing house, bigger check, bigger balls. Right? And what would happen is the woman would get lifted up because she's making more money than the man. You understand? And what happened was in a lot of houses, now hear me, it's role reversal. It's role reversal. Where the men are more like a woman and the woman is more like a man. I see it all the time. My wife and I see it. Like the, the wife would be like, The man will be like, it's role reversal for real. <laughs> Y'all hear me right, man. Come on, God. I'm trying to keep a straight face. Lord, I got a message to preach here. It's real, though. I, I'm animated, as y'all can tell. I, like, I, act, I fall to the ground at times, hit the walls. It is what it is. This is how I preach. Right? So there's a role reversal going on, but the devil is really aimed at the children because what happens when the children yeah. see the mom acting like a man and they see the dad acting like a woman, they become confused. Oh man, I, if I tap into that, we uh, y'all y'all ain't gonna see no sunshine today outside. But I appreciate you mentioning it. Let's think of another tactic, though. After the wars and all of that, that was already messing up houses, right? Yeah. Because now the man really couldn't get brolic with the woman. You know, ladies, it's a good thing for your man to get brolic sometimes. It used to turn a woman on, just, oh, shoot, just, yes, yes, I'm here, honey. Just yell at me. You know what I'm saying? But now... There's an instant attitude the minute a man gets basey with his woman. Now, there's godly houses. Well, I'm not, this might not be your message. It might be for you to tell your family member or someone where you see this spirit of a praying mantis, this curse, right? But the worst thing that the Illuminati did was empower the Jezebel spirit. Because what happened now is when, when welfare came on the scene. Well, actually, let, let's go further back to the times of slavery. What this coward would do, right? This coward slave owner. What he would do was he would, he would do, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Degrading things to a man in front of his wife and children. Thank you. He would emasculate the man. He would beat him and make him beg in front of his wife, in front of his children. He would, he would come in the late night hour, and you know what, to the wife while the husband could not leave. He, he would tell the man, go over there and watch. And it produced a hatred and a despise. <clears throat> and the wife for her man. Yeah, you see the tactic. Even though she knew there was nothing he could do, it was still like, how could I look at you like a man? You're begging this, this guy. Please, master, a thousand pardons, master, please. This is why I take racism so serious. And the second part of this message is about that. So it started back then, they would turn the wives and the children against the man. But then, during the time when welfare came on the scene, Section 8 came on the scene, all of these benefits came on the scene, right? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that when you're at the table with a ruler, I think it's Proverbs 23, you want to write that down. When you're at the table with a ruler, 
If you be a person given the appetite, put a knife to your throat. He says eat and drink, but his heart is far from you. Right? I remember I gave a sermon called The Principles of Bira. The Principles of Bara. This was the this was the evil wicked king that offered Abram a lot of his wealth. Remember when he met with Melchizedek, which was Jesus Christ? Just before Christ came in the flesh, but Christ has always existed. He's God. The, the, the king of Sodom is who Barah is. And he said, I, 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 listen, all I want is the souls of men. I'll, I'll make you rich. But what did Abram say? He said, uh-uh, you ain't no. Because if I take all of this from you, you're going to say you made me rich and not God. That's why my wife and I learn a lot of lessons when it comes to receiving gifts from people. Because not everybody gives with the right motives. Not everybody donates to a ministry with the right motives. Right? You ever have someone giving you a lot of stuff? See, we become wiser and we still got a lot more wisdom to get. Amen? But we become wiser where if someone starts giving us gifts to the ministry, we'll give you money too though. You know what I mean? You, you'll make us a cross for the wall or something. We'll be like... Well, how much did the materials cost and all of that? Here you go. <laughs> that stops you from running your mouth down the road. If you turn your back on us, because that's what people will do. They'll be like, oh, they're a bunch of users. You know what stuff we gave them? Yeah. They have a plan giving you stuff. So Abram knew better. But we don't know better in this generation. Anything that the government, because it says an evil eye, not eyes. It says a ruler that has an evil eye. The Illuminati has an evil eye at the top, right? And <clears throat> when welfare and Section 8 and all of these things came out, you can get it as a woman. But there was one rule. The man was not allowed to live at the house with you. Hmm. <laughs> Huh? Interesting. You don't remember that back in the day when it first came out, huh? Uh-uh. Name couldn't even be on the mailbox. And let me tell you something in the spirit realm. Holy Ghost, guide me. <clears throat> let me tell you something in the spirit realm. Did you know? Now, first off, I am not putting anyone down that's on welfare now. I'm not belittling anybody that has Section 8 now. It can be used as a temporary help. But you always got to let them know your help comes from the Lord. You should have seen my wife and I when we was on food stamps many, 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 many years ago. We broke that card and poverty was broken off of her for life. It might have tried to creep in here and there, but there was a certain advancement when we literally had to walk by faith and say, Lord, you're telling us to end this. I, we broke the card in half, threw it away. And trusted in God. Now eating habits changed up. Can I get an amen? Because brother, when you get in seven, six, or eight, hunt, my sister got two boys. She was getting almost a grand a month. I'm like, what do you need? A G? What are you eating? Good night. Just doing the moonwalk down the lobster aisle. Just get the lobster. Get the scallops. It's Tuesday tacos. I'm like, yo, chill. Because it, 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 what it's going to do is it's going to weaken you tribulation time. You, you're not built for it. No wonder people can't fast. Got $400 left and it's two weeks you get another 900 I'm having trouble fasting, brother. Well, give me your food stamp card, sister. You'll fast good after this. No, no, no. Oh, my wife, I give her credit. I am terrible at this. The joy of the Lord is upon me through, through the store. The supermarket, Walmart, I'd be like, yeah, boys, get it. Oh, hallelujah. What you want? What you want? Nutella? Go on with it. Well, hold on, because you know we got to do that fast. Right? We get to the register, though. I'm beep. Beep, beep, sounded like someone in a coma, just beep. I'm just watching things go, and I'm like, okay, cool, cool, 50. All right, stay around there, brother, don't go higher. 
80. I'm looking back. I'm like, there's still like 30 things still hasn't been checked out yet. I'm like, wait a minute. What happened here? Oh, it's without fail. My wife gave me that look like, don't complain in front of these people. Come on, honey. Come on. Carry yourself better than that. I'm like, what is all of this? Ma'am, let me see the receipt. Print out the receipt. I need to see this. Just for real, I've done that. Four, four bags, $150. I'm like, well, what is the problem here? Right? Because when you don't have that evil eye assistance, yo, you, you got to keep track. You got to choose, right, what you're going to eat. Now, don't, don't be crazy with it, eating ramen noodles all day. You got to, you got to, you know, because you can, you can, um, you can sacrifice. You'll be surprised. There's some people that have Dunkin' Donuts every single day. If you add that up, that's like $40 a month. There's some people that have bad habits, scratch tickets. You ever see people that have scratch ticket habits? Yeah, I used to work at a lottery place all day and night. Like, how do you have a family? How do you pay your rent? Like, they're bouncers. They're just like, yeah. It's, yeah. it's no joke. See, I'm the brother. I got to stay away from it because I know me. I'll be like, oh. I, I'll think the Lord is talking to me just... The Lord just spoke to me. It's that market right there. Payday. Something about a payday lottery ticket. Oh, the winner is there. Get it? Then you got to walk back to your house like, nah, it wasn't a winner. It wasn't a winner. It wasn't. I remember we had someone we seen in his truck. This brother had scratch tickets everywhere. All used. And I'm like, I'm adding it up like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Good night. See? We, we have bad habits. If we would eliminate bad habits, you would have plenty of money to buy right food. You can do it, trust me. You can eat good on a budget. Don't let them lie to you. I'm telling you, you can do it, for real, right? So, but when welfare first came out, the rule was the man was not allowed in the house. Because they say, well, wait a minute, if you got a man, you don't need us. And what it did was it empowered the women to have something over the man. Oh, this is such a good word. Y'all better catch this. And for y'all online, we love you guys. Appreciate your prayers and support. We're praying for you guys. Just get ready because we are running out of time. Okay, pretty soon uh, the internet is not going to allow sermons to be brought to you anymore. And you better have this word in your heart. You better be reading and praying and fasting and coming together with other believers because time is running out. So what it did was it empowered women to say to the man, I don't need you. I got a man. You caught that. I don't need you because I got a man. It's called the government. They'll pay my rent for me. My kids are fed. Brother, you can leave right now. And what it did, it, it, it removed the honor of respecting and needing a man in your life. Because first off, that's not the only reason you're supposed to need a man in your life. A man can teach your children something you cannot. A woman can never teach her son how to be a man. She could tell him how, like, she could tell him pointers and things like that, but she can never teach him how to be a man. Just like a man can never teach his daughter how to be a woman. He can advise her and warn her and teach her things, but it has to be brought to them from that person. So what it did was it empowered the woman and it got worse and worse and worse, where a woman could get in an argument with their baby daddy at home and ah, yeah, yeah, just scratching his face and kicking him in the balls. And he's just like, baby, just stop, just stop, just, just stop. One hit, gone. He's, he's going to jail. But he just got his butt toe up. You ever see a woman fighting a man and she know he don't hit? She know he don't hit no man? And she, she beefing like a, a dude. Right? It's always in this nation, it's always the woman's word over the man's word. He could have a, he could have a fat lip, broken nose, just, uh, uh, 
It's, it's her officer. She got nothing. Just he pushed me. Turn around, sir. Just right. Yeah. It's all about developing the Jezebel spirit. Now, I got to constantly reinforce this. I got to remind people, sisters, if you're a woman of God, this message should not offend you or affect you because not one, first off, this message is not to every woman. It's to every woman as a warning, but it's not directed to every woman because not every woman is a Jezebel. There's nothing more beautiful than a woman who honors male authority. There's nothing more awesome, hallelujah, as far as this category, right, than women who want male authority. They want male leadership. They know the proper order. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, man, woman, children, right? When you reverse the order, everything gets chaotic. Now, this doesn't give men a green light to be rude to their wives, unkind to their wives. You heard what work said, damn it. I'm in charge. It don't give you the green light to do that because God will check you, fellas. God will check y'all. You know what I'm saying? He'll deal with you if you try to, because there's men that birth a Jezebel spirit in their wives. Did you know that? There's men that will actually birth a Jezebel spirit in their wives. Because of how they treat their wives or because of what they don't teach their wives. But I say I thank God for the women that hate Jezebel. You know, and all I can do is testify. My wife loves male authority. And may the Lord richly bless y'all sisters who love male authority. Another, another problem is, is that you have to know the balance, ladies. You have to know the balance between being a wife and being a mother to your husband. If you become a mother to your husband, it's going to warp things. Don't. Powerful. Powerful message. You'll warp things. And husbands, don't be children to your wives. You'll warp things. Ladies, you have to know how to switch gears. You're a mother all day to your children. When your man gets home, it's wife time. You understand? Ask God to give you wisdom how to switch gears. Just like men, ask God to give you wisdom how to switch gears. Now, I want you to go to Mark chapter 6. Everybody there, right? Verse 12 going down. It says, and they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad. And he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead. And therefore mightily works do show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elijah. And others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when, when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. You see that? Get him, Lioness. Get him, honey. It's cool. It's all gravy. Y'all ready? Don't get distracted. Y'all ready? 
Ver let's go back to 16 again. Let's go back to 16. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John, whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself has sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. And John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod feared John knowing that he was a just man and a holy man, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. Now pause right there. Asante. So John the Baptist represented a masculine man, a strong man, right? He was not a eunuch. He clearly told that man straight to his face. Now this is Herod. This ain't no neighbor. This is a ruler who can have you killed. He said, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. What's up? I'm not going to compromise for nobody. Thus says the Lord. Right? You notice now in a lot of churches, they don't respect leadership. If someone in authority tells you something you're doing wrong, the first thing you try to do is behead them. <laughs> Maybe not physically We'll get into that in a minute You ready? And, on, and when a convenient day was come That Herod on his birthday Made a supper to his lords High captains and chief estates Of Galilee And when the daughter of the And when the daughter Of the what? And when the daughter of the said Herodias came in, okay, and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatever you will, and I will give it to you. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask me, I will give it to thee under the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. You heard that. You see that? So she sexually seduced Herod. And he got caught by that spell. And he got deceived to swear an oath, which you cannot reverse. And she asked for the head of John the Baptist got no choice but to off it, right? He didn't want to. Nope, that's a lesson learned. Now, I'm going to show y'all something. Okay, y'all see it? Another male has managed to clamber onto the female's back, and they made after a relatively short time. The mating could take from a few minutes to several hours, depending on the species. In the case of this African species, known as Phodromatus, copulation tends to be a protracted affair. Once the mating is over, the male is in deadly danger. In this case, timing is everything.
In this instance, his fate is sealed. The female was much too quick for him and starts eating her mate alive. This post-coital cannibalism may strike us as extraordinarily callous. But the male is quite simply the nearest high-energy meal around, just right to ensure that the eggs in the female's body mature faster. Creation proceeds even as this female devours the head of her mating mantis. The opening left by the head exudes a drop of green body fluid. Incredibly, the mating continues even though the female has bitten off her partner's head. Pause. <laughs> it's very interesting. I know that um, in the scripture, okay, the Bible warns us over and over and over again about fornication, right? warns us about fornication. Where was it that God threw Jezebel? Into a bed. And who else went on to the bed? The men that commit fornication with her, right? All right. I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 5. I told you I don't need long. Some messages are straightforward. That's how I like them. Yeah. Verse 23. Uh, we'll go to 20. I'm going to read probably about five verses. Giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the what? The fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and clean it with the washing of water by the word. Okay? So there's a double meaning here. The wives are to submit to the husbands, but the husbands are to be kind to their wives. This is a perfect balance. This makes sure that the man never takes advantage of that wives submit thing, right? That he, he makes it easy and fun for his wife to submit, right? But that's actually not why I went to the scripture. I wanted to show you that at the head of the woman is who? The man. At the head of the man is Christ, okay? Go to, Col uh, we'll go to Ephesians uh, 1. It says in verse 22, <clears throat> real quick, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So who's the head of the church? Go to uh, Colossians 2.
Go to verse 10. Somebody read verse 10. Nice and loud. Which is the head of all principal. So Christ is the head, right? Go to Colossians 1. Look at what it says in verse 18. And he is the head of the body and church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, right? Go to 1 Corinthians. 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Verse 3. It says, But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. You see that? So, Go to Proverbs. And we're going to go to verse. Chapter uh, Proverbs 7. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 7, it says in verse 1, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of, my eye, of your eye. Bind them upon your fingers. Write them upon the tables of your heart. Say to wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding my kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. From the stranger which flatters with her words. For at the window of my house I locked, I looked through my casement, and beheld, among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house. In the twilight evening, in the black and the dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the clothing of a whore. And subtle of heart, she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and liveth, lieth in wait in every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day, I have paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings and tapestries and carved works with my fine linen in e of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloe and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. For the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him. And will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. And he goes after her straightway like an ox goes to the slaughter. Or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasten to the snare. And knoweth not that it is for his life. Now pause right there. This word is not only implying to actual fornication, it's implying to the entire realm of pornea, which is the original Greek word for porno. Okay? And what's going on here, we have, uh, I'll have to use a little bit of code talk. But, if you notice what a praying mantis does. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do they call it a praying mantis? It appears to be... Sp 
There's a lot of women in the church that appear to be spiritual, but they're there to eat ahead. And when I read my Bible, I know that the head of the man is Christ. And what happens is, is these praying mantises come into the churches, false prophetesses, right? But they're only there to get into a bed with you, and if you submit to her, she'll devour Christ right from you. This is what that spirit does. It wants to get you in lust. And this is why your walk with the Lord is not where it needs to be because you're caught in pornea. Every time you're in a bed with that spirit, it's eating away at Christ on your head. The same way the praying mantis waits to the male fornicates with her and then grabs him and devours his head. Now, really thinking about it, you look how John the Baptist was beheaded, right? I've said this in the past. John the Baptist was beheaded. And in the book of Revelation, it says that the Antichrist method of killing Christians will be beheading. And the only revelation that that you could clearly see is that Satan hates our connection to Christ so much that he wants to separate the body from the head as a representation of separating Christ from us. So I am giving a warning to the churches scattered throughout. Watch out for this praying mantis spirit. But it comes in male and female form. It comes in men too. Men that will try to seduce women by looking like a spiritual person, right? Looking like they know their Bible, but their whole intention is to devour the virtue that God has put on your head, sister. You understand? This is the curse of the praying mantis. A lot of ministries get destroyed by this spirit. Because they let certain women get into certain positions of authority and they slowly devour the head, headship of Christ in that ministry. All throughout the Bible, in Judges 16, write that down. What happened to Samuel? I mean, um, what happened to Samson? That's right. That's right. That's right. What did Proverbs 31 talk about? Yep, it did. See, that's women of God. Women of God that won't try to devour the head off the man. Wow. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Right now I'm on Proverbs 31. Oh, Judges 16. You're talking about a virtuous woman, right? Women that honor male authority. Women that actually help Christ form on the head of men. See that? May the Lord richly bless the women that do that. That encourage the men to read, whether it's their husband, their, their sons, or just men in general. They, they encourage them to read. They encourage them to pray. They encourage them to fast. They, they're, not, they're not afraid to tell them when they're doing wrong either, not as a way to earn some authority over the man, but pull the man aside and say, honey, I, or, or if it's a husband or if it's just a brother or something, like, I got to tell you, I had a dream, you know, please watch out for this or don't do this. Remember how the woman, the wife came to Pilate, said, I had a dream this night. Don't touch this man. He's a holy man. So there's, there's two sides playing right now. You have the Proverbs 31 woman. Really, you want to know the times when my wife gets upset with me? Is if I'm not walking with the Lord the best I can. To me, that's godly. You know what I mean? If there's a time where I'm not reading as much as I'm supposed to, or 
if I committed to a fast and didn't do it or... Guys, I've been in the law 16 years. I've had amazing victories and I've had failures. But it's made me stronger as a person. You understand? Then she'll be upset. That's a Proverbs 31 woman because she wants me to be better in the Lord. She wants Christ, the head of Christ, to be fully formed on my head. Because it'll benefit her. Because I'm her head. And he's my head. And together, there's power. But there's something else mentioned in Proverbs 31. It says, do not give your strength to women. That was a warning. What happened with David and Bathsheba? Praying mantis. Devoured the head right off of him. He fell weak in lust because he was first off... It said when, at a time when men ought to be at war, he was in bed. Brother, what are you doing? You are a brother chilling with a silk robe watching Netflix. <laughs> brother, holding it down. And out of all people, David was so mighty. He was such a warrior. But he could not fight against that praying mantis. It got him. It said that he, he looked off, right? It said that he looked off his, uh, out of like a window or balcony and across there was a lady taking a bath. Funny her name is Bathsheba. Was that a coincidence? Like Bathsheba. She was taking a bath. There you go. So David got struck with lust. Some men, at a time when you, ooh, this is good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. At a time when you ought to be in war as a man of God in your home and as a king in your home, under the great king, you're in bed on the internet. Instead of being in your prayer closet, going to war for your wife and children, going to war for your city, you're, you're on the internet late nights of the hour and what happens is a Bathsheba pops up and you click on it. And all the while you're watching this video, you're not supposed to be watching. You have no clue that your head is being eaten right off of your neck. Wow. wow. Bananas. How many of y'all know what Samson's name means? I've taught this before, but I, I, I like it. This revelation is so deep. I love talking about it. Every time I mention it. Samson's name means child of the sun. Like the sun that shines. What do you think Delilah means? Daughter of the night. Paul said, what does light? So you see this curse of the praying mantis and ladies, be warned, it comes in male form. You could be on point, man. Ooh, ah, this is revelation, hallelujah. I feel it's prophetic. There's somebody either here or online, there's, a, there's an attack coming your way, and this word can save your life. I just felt that in the spirit, heavy, heavy, heavy. You're in prayer, and you're asking God for a man from the Lord. Right? But you didn't know that the devil got somebody trimmed up for you. The brother wears a suit. He comes to church. He speaks in tongues. He's going to want to study with you. And you're going to notice that it's going to be almost blinding, but God will show you. He has ulterior motives. His whole goal it's to fornicate with you and to devour the virtue off of you. So don't say I didn't warn you, whoever you are. Because it, it, that spirit does come in male form. Now there's different, there's different types. Uh, how, how would I say? There's different ways that the, the praying mantis uh, curse comes in. 
it comes into marriages where the wives castrate the men behind closed doors. Okay? And um, I'm, I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Hold on. I can't, matter of fact, I can't even do that. I, <laughs> I was going to show you a video, but I didn't know it was that bad. There's a video of a lady sitting at a table with her husband. And she's the dominant one, and he's all emasculated. And it, it literally, her, her breasts are almost popping out of the shirt. And she's the preacher. And he's sitting there like, like all emaciated. And, and um, it, it stirred up a lot of controversy, but it also empowered a lot of women. We're living in a day and age where the men have become eunuched, emascul emasculated, right? And the women have become empowered. You see it all the time. You, you even see it with celebrities. You have Beyonce, the strong woman, just, right? And you have the weak Jay-Z. You have the Kim Kardashian and the Kanye West. But you can see the, the effeminate spirit is in the man and the masculine spirit is in the woman. This is the role reversal. This all comes from the Jezebelian agenda. So my warning, and, and guys, I'm just letting you know, if you're in fornication right now, porno right now, or any of those things, this is why your relationship with Christ is not where it, it needs to be. It's because that curse is devouring Christ right out of your life. It's literally devouring the headship of Christ off of you. So right now we're going to do a prayer that, that if, if, you've been, if you've been fornicating or if you've been, uh, you know, into pornea or anything like that, now is the time to be set free because you are literally removing Christ off of you. That's what the spirit does. It comes in, it usually operates under a sexual attack. And once it gets a person where it needs them to be, it removes Christ off of them. May I say something? I wanted to recommend a video from a, a Christian man who does a lot of spoken word and he's on YouTube and he breaks down how you um, actually, what is it? Um, break all 10 commandments from masturbating. It's amazing. Really? How? Okay. I'm going to have to look that up. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Send us the link. I would love to hear that. De definitely. So people don't realize how dangerous this really is. And it's, it's, it's a, a vicious cycle because what happens is 
is you see all through the Bible men that fell apart because of the curse of the praying mantis. That's my nickname for it, but it's really Jezebel, right? But women, ladies, it comes in male form. Don't get it twisted. Some of y'all have husbands that hate Christ and they're trying to devour Christ off of you. You're a fool to let it happen. Stand firm. Protect Christ as the head over you. Because what happens is, is if your husband is not saved, even though he's your head, Christ is your head. You understand? And the same thing applies with the men. Some of you men have been castrated and you are afraid of your wife. Because she has, been, she has a dominant spirit. She has an advantage over you. If you don't, if, 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 if she could leave and guess what? The kids go with her. You understand? She's going to be fine. Welfare will kick in within a month. Food stamps are going to kick in. What are you going to do? Pay child support. They did this stuff on purpose to birth the Jezebel spirit in the women. So I say women... It's time to break that curse off of your life. It's time to say that I honor male authority. And, and I don't want to do that to men. Because men, a lot of you, and, and I speak this by revelation. You know how the man had the withered arm? Jesus says, stretch forth thy hand. Four words. Immediately his arm grew back. We're going to do a prayer tonight. And I'm going to say, get your balls back. Okay? Get your balls back. Because you've lost them. A lot of men have lost them due to uh, masturbation, due to fornication, and due to Jezebel. You cannot live with a Jezebel unless you're eunuch and castrated. You're not allowed to live with her. And you'll see how the Jezebel spirit will operate. Do you know how many men have come into this ministry and left because of their wives? Terrible. Because a, a woman will support you up into a, a certain length. Once you become masculine, you are be taught by a masculine man. John the Baptist was masculine. He was a man. That's why he said when Jesus spoke of John the Baptist, he said, what did you come to see? A man in soft raiment? What do you think he meant by that? A girly man. Or a reed shaking in the wind, some effeminate little emaciated guy. No, John the Baptist was a rugged man. He loved women, he, he honored them and respected them, but he was masculine. You, know, you understand? So what we have to do, and, and also men that have godly wives, you got to thank the Lord for your wife. Amen. Wives that, that fight Jezebel, you better love that woman. You know what I'm saying? And, and my wife and I, we learned early in our marriage that I'm not going to be an Ahab and you ain't going to be a Jezebel. And we've been growing in the Lord. And she wants me to be the head of her life. And I want Christ to be the head of my life. And that's how you get proper order. You understand? But not every man has that. And if you're online, brother, and you're going through it, and you got a wife, or you might be, you know what I'm saying, your, your wife... Plays it off in church. She's a praying mantis. She prays all the time. She looks spiritual. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Shandarai, oh, the Lord. But as soon as you get home, it's like, what was that? What was what? Was what? You know. I seen the way you looked at the girl in the back. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're a totally different person now behind closed doors. There's a lot of praying mantises that marry men. They're one way in public. They, they appear to be a prayer, spiritual. <laughs> That's what a praying mantis is. And it looks like it's praying, but it's not. There's a lot of witches in the churches. There's a lot of false prophetesses who claim to be women of God. They appear to be prayer warriors. They appear to be spiritual. 
but behind closed doors, they're slicing their husband's balls right off, emasculating him and removing Christ off of his head. And he never, ever, ever grows to the next level of spirituality because she got him in a bed with her. And again, and again, men listening to this by way of the internet or wherever, before you just immediately look at your wife and be like, no wonder I'm not spiritual. No, you don't read and pray. Don't blame your wife. But come against a spirit. Come against, remember Jezebel operates out of witchcraft. She dominates, manipulates, and intimidates. So if there's a husband that got the male version of the, the praying man to spirit or a woman that got the Jezebel praying man to spirit, they will either dominate, manipulate, and intimidate in their marriage. You understand? It's time to have proper order in the churches. If you notice, what happens most times when you see women in leadership positions in the churches? What are the men like? Praise the Lord, all my soul. Praise the Lord. Right? Where are the men? They're gone. Balls roll down the block. Why? Because the head of that church is a praying mantis. And she sleeps with every man in there. Maybe not physically, but she sleeps with them in a bed when she preaches to them, when she teaches. It's called Big Mama's Church. That's another good title. Right? And she cuts the head right off of the men. She removes Christ from the men. And everybody sits there helpless. No spiritual walk, nothing. And these are the churches that are out of order because there's praying mantises in there. Devouring Christ off of your man, off of your mind. You don't think about the Bible anymore. You don't read anymore. Because somewhere, somehow, you got into the bed with a praying mantis. So when women come into a ministry and they appear to be spiritual and they're prophesying and they're praying long prayers, be careful because they call it a praying mantis because it appears to be praying. They appear to be spiritual. You as a man of God, you need to see in the spirit. Just like men that come in. And they appear to be spiritual. They got the suit on. I'll never forget. There was this one brother. He went to a. He went to one of those Pentecostal churches. At the time, I was struggling with my wife. You know, we was rich in Christ, but we were struggling financially. And um, a couple of times, I went to that church, and I realized what was in that church. I was out of there. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. That's not where God wanted me to be, right? But this brother. Light skin, blue eyes. That's, that's a rare find. Ladies, be careful. You know what I mean? That, you, it's hard to find brothers with blue eyes. You know what I'm saying? Unless they were in contact. Brother always had a sharp suit on. Oh, and he had that Christian style lingo down to the T. Like, brother, what you need to do is you need to serve. And I remember when, when my wife and I bumped into him in front of a honey farm's he started to try to school me on rubbing my wife's feet in front of my wife. Like, out of nowhere. Like, what you need to do, brother, is rub your wife's feet and treat her like a queen. What was he really doing? That's right. He was trying to do something. He had an ulterior motive. I'm looking at this clown like, brother. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, brother, I know what you're doing. I, I, re I let him know. I said, I see what you're doing, homie. See, I'm that one. Love you, brother. I I'll call you, all right? So now you look at the whole situation. When we bring it all together, doesn't it sound like it makes complete sense? Why you see so many churches all torn up and apart and you don't see Christ there? How many churches have you visited and you feel no presence of God whatsoever? It's the curse of the praying mantis. Jesus Christ has been removed off to the head of the pastor. And from that, it went to the deacon, the bishops, and the men. And once the head gets removed off the men, the authoritative head of the man gets removed off the woman. And now it's lawlessness. We have to break the curse of Jezebel. We have to take back our marriages. We have to take back our children. We have to take back the ministries. 
and say, Lord, if, if a man could grow a withered arm, grow back the headship. Amen. So this is the prayer we're going to do. Can you let my wife know we're going to pray? So th this is going to be our prayer. We're going to pray on different levels with this, okay? First prayer we got to do is, first we want to give thanks to the Lord for the real women of God who do not try to devour the head of Christ off of the men. The Bible says, give thanks with a grateful heart. Amen? The Bible says we enter his gates with thanksgiving on our heart and enter his courts with praise. So uh, let's say this together. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me for my sins, known and unknown. Wash me in your blood. Lord Jesus, thank you for women of God who honor male authority. Women of God who fight against Jezebel. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Strengthen those women. Grow in them. Cause them to be powerful, to fight against Jezebel, to war against the curse of the praying mantis. One of the most hidden curses that people don't know about. Lord Jesus Christ, right now, if I've ever was used by a spirit, by Jezebel, Ahab, and if I've ever devoured the head off of a person by seducing them, whether sexually or in the spirit realm, or the mental realm, I repent, Jesus. I repent if I've ever been used as a tool for the enemy. Lord, use me. Use me to help place back the head of Christ on the men, on the ministries. Right now, we openly rebuke and make war against Jezebel, the curse of the praying mantis. Those that come into the churches pretending to be spiritual only to devour the head off of the ministry, off of the men, and off of the women. Lord, give us wisdom and prudence and a discerning spirit to see through these liars that come in charmy. They charm, they look good, but they got an agenda. They're not trying to study, they're trying to fornicate. Expose this spirit. And Lord, now the men say this and you by way of the internet, Lord Jesus Christ, if I've been castrated, if I've been eunuched by my mother, by any woman, by my wife or by any female. Lord, give me back my masculinity. Give me my balls back, my authority back. And Lord, I repent for allowing you to be removed off of my head. Come back to me, Lord. Grow on me at the head of me. Make it you. Make it you. Remove pornea out of my life. Fornication and all sexual immorality. Remove it out of my life, Jesus. That I can be a man of God that is obedient to the cross. Obedient to your word. I will not tolerate Jezebel. I will not tolerate her. Wherever I see her, I will rebuke her. I will call out her lies and expose her. Now ladies say in the name of Jesus Christ, any man or any person that's ever tried to remove Christ off of me, I repent. Christ come back to me. 
Grow in my mind. Grow in my mind. And for you that are married, say, Lord, give my husband the full headship of Christ over him. The mind of Christ in him. Give him the mind of Christ at the head of my husband. Make it Jesus Christ. If he's been devoured by a Jezebel spirit, Lord, give me the strength to pray for him, to know what's going on, to be patient, to know maybe his mother or his sisters or ex-girlfriends devoured his, his, his head. And I'm asking you to grow it back. Give him back that masculinity. Break the curse of the praying mantis off of my husband that he can lead as a man and not be arrested in his development but to stand firm to not be afraid to not be afraid but to be bold and righteous authoritative but yet seasoned with kindness I pray for the men in every church give them back their testosterone, what's that called? For, the, uh, what's it called? The testosterone fortitude? And give them back their intestinal fortitude. Give them back their masculinity. Give them back their authority. Give them back the head of Christ. I pray. Everybody, I pray. The curse of the praying mantis. I pray the curse of Jezebel and Ahab. I pray the curse of role reversal. Lord, break the curse off the women that use threats against their men because they got an upper hand in the world. They got food stamps, Section 8, welfare. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? What's it called when the man got to pay every week? Child support. Say child support. I will not use that witchcraft against my husband in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I would rather struggle with my husband than get all my provisions from the Illuminati only to remove my husband off of my head. I break that curse. Give my husband work. Cause him to be a working man. In the gospel and also with his hands. Lord, deliver me. For anybody still on welfare, I want you to say, Lord, Jesus Christ, help me to use it as a footstool, but not to use it as a career. Lord, deliver me from Section 8. Welfare and food stamps. That, hallelujah, and this by way of the internet, because some of y'all got men that have not been in the house because of this. Say, Lord, provide for my man that he can be the worker in my house, that he can feel good when he comes home. We might not be able to do a moonwalk down the lobster aisle, but we eat with a smile. We eat with joy because we have peace. And I am not ashamed to call my husband the head of my house for no stupid section eight. I am not hiding his name on the mailbox. I boldly proclaim it at the post office. Do you got mail for my husband is what you need to be saying. Can I get an amen? It's time to love the men of the uh, men of war. Lord, make men of war. Make men of war. Because men of war provoke women of war. It's time to stop fighting each other. I break the curse off the marriages that cause husbands and wives to fight. I break that curse of division in your home. I, do you accept it? I break that spell of always fighting each other. Always holding negative things to each other unforgiveness and bitterness you better break that in the name of Jesus Christ Lord cause the woman and man to be at peace with each other in their marriage to, for the woman to want to build up her man as a holy man of God 
for her to want to help develop and encourage him to get the head of Christ. And for his, the man to want to encourage to be the right head for his wife. That he's praying with his wife. He's reading with his wife. Bring healing to the marriages, oh God. Bring proper order, Lord. And remove the spirit in the children, God. That causes the boys to get confused. And the girls to get confused. Because they know daddy's the man. And they know mama's the woman. But when they look at the character, they see daddy as the mommy. And they see mommy as the daddy. And they get confused. Break that curse, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And I pray, Lord, that you set free those that are addicted to pornography. Those that are addicted to masturbation. Break it, Jesus. Break it in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, you curse. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Curse of the praying mantis. Break that in Jesus name. Devouring the head of Christ. It's time to get your head back. It's time to get Christ back. It's time to say. I will make war against this curse. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because as you think you're slipping away. Sneaking away. Watching things you ought not. And doing things you ought not. You are letting that spirit devour and remove Christ off of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for the single women. I pray for the single men. Protect them God. They're at a point in their life where they want a companion. They need that warm body to lay with and talk with and laugh with and giggle with and read a Bible with. But God, protect them that they don't become desperate where they don't discern the people that come into their life. This whole ChristianMingle.com vibe where they want to date Christians and see if they're one or not. God, show them a sign who's for them. And as they're waiting, oh God, that they would worship you and appreciate you as their spouse, as their husband, in the name of Jesus Christ. And give my sisters discernment about the Prince Charming spirit, that foul male version of the Jezebel spirit, that foul male version of the praying mantis spirit. Oh, he'll speak in tongues to get you in the bed, sister, trust me. Oh, he will be a gentleman. You will think you marry Jesus part two. But he got an agenda. And as soon as he's done removing your virtue, he's going to put spirits in you. And he's going to walk away from you like the coward he is. I say never give it up. Never give it up. You wait till you're married, sister. You wait till you're married, brother. You make sure you marry in the right one as well. There's some that have married Jezebel from hell. Their whole Christ head got removed off of them. And now, brother, you're listening to me online saying, that's me. I don't pray the same like I used to. I don't read my Bible like I used to. I'm not even a man anymore. Your wife done eat up your head. And it's time for you to pray for your wife, not to be her enemy. Because somehow, some way, she was trained up by her mother. The lies the mothers used to tell their daughters that all men are dogs, men are good for nothing. Get yourself a good man that'll take care of you, but if you get out of line, you know what to do. Withhold the, the bedroom from him. He'll, he'll, he'll trust me, he'll, he'll, girl, he'll do it. Trust me, he'll do whatever you say. Just don't give him none. Cause him to get, get backed up. No, you don't know these tactics. Grandma done told mama, and mama done told daughter. And how many of y'all know that the curse of Jezebel, she uses her daughters to get her way? Can I, oh, come on. The same way Herodias wanted the head of John the Baptist, she got her daughter to dance. Ain't that right? She devoured the head, but it was through a slick way. It's time to take back our marriages for men to be kind to their wives. I told you this wasn't a message against women. Because real women of God appreciate a message like this. Real women of God say it's about time a message like this gets preached. Because I'm not seeing men of God. I'm seeing castrated males with no balls, no head of Christ, still in bed with the praying mantis. 
can't you see? It said even when his head is removed, he's still fornicating with her. Men that are married to women and, or, or pastors that let the raw women into certain parts of authority and they're fornicating with them even though their head is gone, they're still thinking they're doing something for God. And they ain't doing nothing. It's time to break that lust off of you. It's time to be delivered from that lust. And some of y'all brothers think y'all GQ smooth, sleeping around, using women. I got news for you. God is coming to see you, pal. God is coming to see you because that's his daughter you seducing. That's his daughter you're using. That's his daughter. And I pray a prayer. God, you've done warn these people. But you said it's better that woe unto you to harm one of these little ones. What you think he was talking about five-year-olds only? He's talking about his children. You try to, let me tell you, I, I'm going to release a prayer right now. If you, by way of hearing this, hearing this words out of my mouth right now, no matter how far this message may go, if you try to seduce a sister in the church to get in her panties when you know she's really seeking the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray the Lord will punish you and hand you over to Satan. You'll be pissing razor blades, homie. You keep it up. You keep it up. The Bible says I can hand you over to Satan. Paul did it to Alexandra. If you try to hinder a woman of God who you know is looking for a man and you use her just to get into the bed with her, I pray God will teach you a lesson. I release it across the earth. And the same thing applies with the women. If you come to church dressed like Beyonce only to castrate the men, I pray God will teach you a lesson. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's time that the Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffer violent and the violent take it by force. The only reason nobody is doing nothing is happening is because nobody's doing nothing. Nobody's saying nothing. How many of y'all have seen the video of the two girls doing the stripper dance in the front of the altar? Y'all seen that video? Titties hanging out just twirling on the floor. All the old ladies weren't even saying nothing. It's because the curse of the praying mantis already removed Christ off of the ministry. And the men have become effeminized. This is the curse. That is the tactic of Jezebel. She gets into the bed, starts to ride you, and eats Christ's head right off of you. Hallelujah. Lord, make me have a vendetta against Jezebel. And make it double for the women. Hallelujah. These women of God, I thank God for my wife. I thank God for my sisters. Make it even double portion for the women that they hate Jezebel with a passion. Anytime they even remotely act like a Jezebel, cause them to repent and hate it even more. Anytime they see a character of Jezebel, that they strike at it. Anytime their husbands try to even cause them to be Jezebel, they strike at it. That they're going to war against the spirit using their husbands. You're not going to turn me to be a Jezebel. And I'm not going to walk away from you either because I'm not a quitter. I'm going to go to war for you, husband. I'm going to go to war for you, pastor. I'm going to go to war for you, deacon. I'm going to go to war for you, bishop. And I'm going to fight that Jezebel spirit. Because probably your mama got you castrated when you was a child. Because you ain't had no daddy. And now you expect me to be your mother and not your wife. Well, I got news for you. I ain't your mother. I'm your wife. And I'm going to treat you like a wife. And I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to fast for you. I'm going to fight Jezebel. And I'm going to lay hands on you. And you're going to get your balls back. You're going to get your masculinity back. You're going to get your authority back. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus right now. I pray in the name of Jesus right now. I pray for the men. I pray for the men. I pray for the men who got Jezebel wives that you don't give up on them. That you Don't tell me you're going to leave your wife if you haven't prayed and fasted down to bones for her. How much do you love your wife then? How much do you love your husband then? Are you praying for them? Do you fast for them? Are you going to war for them? Are you up at 3 in the morning walking around your house saying, Jezebel, you can't have my wife? She is owned by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. When you see these ministries where the pastors got no head on them because they've been devoured by false prophetesses and false men of God that come in looking like a praying mantis. Oh, they got their hands together. Oh, they got their hands together. Oh, they can pray. Oh, man, they speak the tongues the best. Oh, oh, they can, but they dare to take a head off. They dare to devour a head. Get out the bed in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, God. Thank you for women of war. Thank you, Lord. Speak that prophecy across the earth, oh God. Declare right now that women of God rise up. Women come together and prophesy over this nation. Prophesy over the church and say, I'm speaking by the word of the living God that we shall live and not die, that men will take the position they're called to do, that we will be healed from all wounds. Say, Lord, heal me from all wounds. All wounds, God, from past relationships, from teachings of my mother, teachings of my father, teachings of my old friends that changed my character and my personality to be dominant, to earth up witchcraft, to get what I want. Break it, Jesus. Break it off of me. Break it off of me. I reject every teaching that I've ever been taught that goes against Christ. I do not accept it. I reject it. I will be holy. I will be righteous. Women say the man will be on my head. Men say Christ will be on my head. And we will have proper order in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, break the arrested development. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because, Lord, I see a lot of women get frustrated with their men. Because it's true, a lot of times we, we don't act mature. Men do not take responsibilities the way they should. I see it all the time, especially around the house. And I wanna bring healing right now to the home. Healing to the home. Because there's a vicious cycle of, of frustration in houses. With the doorknobs half falling off, but the man don't think to fix it. Trash doesn't get taken out on time. Bills get forgotten to be paid for. Work ain't bringing in enough money. And all of these things put a weight on the wife. I ask you, God, to give peace to the wives. Give peace to them, God, to trust you more, that you will change their husbands. Because I know you're changing me. I give it to you, Lord. Make me strong, mature, no compromise. I love you, Jesus. And that you cause the husbands to be patient with their wives. That we're there for each other. That we work as a team. And for all the single brothers and sisters. That God will remove that burning sexual feeling. And replace it with praise and worship. Oh, that's a good prayer. That God will remove that sexual urge you have. And not only sexual urge, but the need to have a companion. And that he'll replace it with the companionship of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that he gives you a special anointing. Right now, I pray this for all my single brothers and sisters in the Lord. That he will give you a discerning spirit so strong and so powerful, you will be able to recognize an assassin. You will be able to recognize a Jezebel in a male or a female form. You will be able to recognize the curse of the praying mantis so you can protect Christ that's in your mind because they're only trying to get into the bed with you to devour Christ off of you. Say, Lord, Lord protect, me. protect me. Protect my mind. Protect my mind. Stay, on me, Jesus. Stay on me, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Hallelujah.